Sandra. And this is another Q&A video with us, but this time we asked you guys for questions and we got a ton of really good ones, so let's jump right in. What are each of your favorite foods? Any chicken dish. <laughs> Any way you want to kick chicken, I'll probably like it. <laughs> That's really broad, but it totally, totally makes sense. Mine is anything cheesy. Oh, cheese, cheese. sauce yeah. on everything. Macaroni and cheese, gluten free. Any kind of like fancy ass cheese. Fancy ass cheese. I'm down with fancy Truffle ass cheese. cheese. Goat cheese, like cheese, tart, sheep so cheese. No. Yeah. Camel Love goat cheese. cheese. Never tried camel cheese. I've tried camel milk chocolate actually. Pretty decent. Mm. And it's just like milk chocolate. Okay, are you doing any more dessert and wine pairings? Yes. We have a friend who lives in Vienna. His name is Iker and he's training to be their version of sommelier and he's fantastic. And we worked with him on a few pairings. So he chose a wine, gave me the tasting notes and I came up with a recipe that of a dessert that would pair well with that, that dessert wine. So check out our IGTVs on those. So yeah, we will totally be doing more. Any tips for baking gluten-free bread? Don't just use a basic one-to-one um, flour mix. Um, you can yeah. be adding some other things to make it nice and fluffy, but also stable. And yeah. um, you're gonna want it to rise in the pan that you're baking. You don't want to move it. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to like, Punch, Count, it. punch it down after it's risen. Don't do that because it won't rise again. It'll be flat. Yeah. <laughs> what baking attempt went horribly wrong you haven't tried since? I tried making some chocolate gringo cookies with Splenda instead of sugar, and they turned out into these little black coal lumps. <laughs> and it was terrible, and I was very distraught. You can just imagine like, taking those out of the oven and being like, I was like, no. What happened? This has never <laughs> happened to me before. Mine is the, the gel, green jealous ally. When I was five, uh, we went to Alabama to visit family. She was gonna, yeah, she was gonna post it on the website. Yeah, because I was so recipe. excited to like remake this childhood. Like somebody, it did not work. Yeah, somebody in our family made green jealous out, and I loved it when I was five. They must have had a different recipe because all the ones we found online that I like based our new one off of, it just did. I it was bad. It was very bad. Lots of mayonnaise and cottage cheese in a sweet, gloopy. It was not good. Which sister got into baking first? Me. I totally thought it was gonna be me, but I forgot. No, no, it was me. I, I was six and I won first place and grand champion at the county fair for my spice cake yeah. that I made by myself. Okay, what was the thing you struggled with the most when you found out you were celiac? Well, the fact that it was 2004, there was like nothing yeah. gluten free. Like maybe one or two things. At least in the US. And nothing was marked gluten free. Couldn't eat out at all. I was 11 and you're just like, you can't share snacks with friends anymore. Yeah. You can't go to birthday parties. I had to bring like containers of food to birthday parties because I couldn't eat anything. Yeah. So that sucked. Okay, what is your biggest recipe success? I mean, when I was six. <laughs> no, but you also did the tiramisu. But yes, uh, a couple months ago, I made tiramisu for the first time. Made my own gluten-free lady fingers. Yeah, Um deal. And it turned out super good. Is amazing. I didn't get to try yeah. it because I don't like it. So good. <laughs> so proud of myself. Oh, cannelés. French cannelés, which are like these really traditional baked custard that are really little, caramelized. Um, copper exterior. cups. Oh, like I had to let the batter sit for like 48 hours to steep in the vanilla bean and the rum. I would make them frequently because it is a huge endeavor, but yeah. they were amazing. And my boyfriend who's from France approved and I was like, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> So many questions more. Okay, let's go through these really fast. <gasps> Have you ever experimented with baking gluten-free breads? Yes. yes. We answered that. Yep. We answered that. Mm -hmm. I ate a gluten-free bagel stack. We have not done bagels. It's another rising dough. It's like my troubles with um, gluten-free cinnamon rolls. Um, yeah. Gluten-free yeast doughs, not breads, doughs. Uh, where you're like molding it into a shape yeah. is really difficult. It's super tricky. So we're still working on that, but it will get done. Because <laughs> I would also like bagels. I Me love too. bagels. I really like bagels. bagels. What's the best crust to make for a fruit tart? Does it matter on the fruit? Ooh, I mean, you could do a patsuka. Stone fruits work really well with like nut crusts because it tastes good. Yeah, I was gonna like, say like a, even just a graham pecan. cracker crust or like a, a toasted pecan ground up crust or like a ginger biscuit crust. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. do like a graham cracker crust and add ginger to it. Or like a shortbread crust. Yeah. What's your baking playlist? 
I mean, mean, it sort of depends on my mood when I'm yeah, making. Yeah. Because, like, if it's early in the morning, I'm mainly listening to, like, rock. Oh. Um, <laughs> but if it's, like, afternoon and I'm, like, I might have time and I'm, You're like, like Woo! I'm, like, listening to ABBA. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I listen to a lot of ABBA, too. Or I have, what have I listened to recently? I have, like, a, I have, like, a playlist of, like, a bunch of great soundtracks, like, movie mm, soundtracks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if it's, like, if you want to be inspired, I'm just, like, Oh, that's, that's what I listen to. Or if I need to practice, I listen to my voice lesson playlist because it's like the songs that I'm trying to learn. Favorite vacation destination? Favorite. That's I mean, this sort of depends. Hard. If it's like summer and I'm like, want to be standing on a cliff top in the sun with the wind <laughs> blowing, top. like I'll go to like Italy or, or, or southern France. I know who asked this question. Vienna is definitely a great city to visit. <laughs> um, it's gorgeous in the summer and the winter. It's like a winter wonderland. And it's a gorgeous summer, like, magical city. Switzerland is one of my favorites, too, actually. Switzerland is beautiful. I went through Switzerland on a train, but I had food poisoning, so I didn't get to experience it. <laughs> Next time. Do you have any pets? Um, I don't have pets. I have two cats. I would like to have more, but that is all I have at the time. And then, yeah, the family has two dogs. The family has, we have, the family has two dogs. Yeah, so when I visit, I get all four, which is amazing. Yes. But then I go home to nothing. <laughs> it's very sad. What's it like growing up in Oregon? We grew up in a very small little valley. It was nice growing up with no sales tax. Oh, um, yes. It was a little concerning growing up not learning how to pump our own gas, which I had to learn. When yeah. I- we all got super lucky because we're, we're, it's, there's not a lot of people in Oregon. <laughs> Yeah. It, the population density it's, is super yeah. low. It was super nice being like super into the outdoors because you get access mm-hmm. to mountain lakes, hiking, like literally minutes from your doorstep. Yeah. And it's and it's not crowded. Like I live in the Bay Area now and every single time I go hiking we see like fifty plus other people. And people are playing music and like talking really loud. And you're like, ah if you're in Oregon, you're lucky if you see one other person on the trail and yeah. they'll be like, hey, howdy, how's it going? And then like, that's it. Super friendly, super quiet. Like you have access to amazing outdoors areas and it's beautiful. 